Let's modify this so we can add these and end up with this. What's up guys? Welcome back to STG. It is good to be back. Man, I missed this last week. It was weird not having a couple of videos drop and be able to interact with you guys. But you know what? It was good. It was a good time to just kind of get refreshed, get some stuff, much needed stuff done around here. Um, so yeah, it was good, but I'm super psyched to be back. Thank you also for all the great feedback. I mean, that last video got more, way, way more comments than I ever thought it would. Really good feedback. Um, helped, helped to kind of confirm sort of where I was wanting to go. So I think in the future we will probably do shorter form videos multiple times a week, but you know me, I got to try everything at least once. So don't be surprised if you see a long form in there, soup to nuts. We are launching a whole new line of baits on the channel. And that of course, as you saw, spinner baits. So since Christmas, I have had my hands on this poison tail jig mold. Uh, for swim jigs, knowing that I wanted to modify this guy and start pouring spinner baits with it. And I have done that with the half ounce. That's the one that you guys saw already, this guy right here. But what I thought we'd do today is modify this guy together for the three quarter ounce. <clears throat> Full disclosure and disclaimer. As I tell Reed, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one. So, I am fully aware that there are many different ways to go about modifying this mold. Nothing brings out the strong, passionate opinions of jig makers, lure makers, lead pourers, um, like modifying a mold or showing how you do something in the shop. Holy moly. Fair warning, all of you Dremel fans, I'm not going to get out the Dremel. You've been told. I know that you can use a Dremel to modify this mold. I'm not going to do that. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm not saying it's the only way. I'm just saying it's the way I'm going to do it. We're going to walk through this together. Today is part one of three, as I mentioned. Part one today is going to be modifying the mold. We're going to pour the lead. We're going to cut the sprue and shape it. Um, we're going to paint this guy, we're going to cure it in the oven, and we're going to put the eyes on it and seal it. So that's all today. The next one, part two, is going to be taking it to the vise and tying it up at the vise, which you can imagine presents some challenges with that wire in the way. So that'll be fun. Um, and then part three, we're going to go to the soft plastic station and shoot a custom trailer for this guy. Stay tuned for the whole week to see the whole build, but today let's get in to modifying this mold. All right, tools of the trade to make this happen, at least my approach. We're gonna need a rubber mallet. We're gonna need a uh, triangle file. See that? Three-sided triangle file. And then um, some blue painter's tape as well as a piece of wood. So here's the mold as uh, it is today. You can see I've already modified the half. We'll talk about this uh, this red stuff here in a little bit, but that's where I uh, cut the channel for the wire form, and this is where the wire form comes down on the other side. Um, a lot of guys will modify this mold with this piece here, but they don't cut this channel, and it can lead, in my opinion, to the wire being out of whack and you have to do a lot of bending and things, uh, things of that nature. So we're actually going to do um, both today. Let me show you how it sits though in the half ounce first. Take our hook and hook it around. Lay that guy in there. There you go. See it comes down the channel right up through and the hook point, you can just barely see that hook point, is just on the edge. So this is the what we want to see happen out of here. So if we just kind of mock that up for a second and move this over. So again, 
hook's going to go in. That's why we want the tape, so we can tape things in place. And it's going to look sort of like that right there. So we'll come right underneath. Let me show. See how there's that hook eye center piece there to keep your hook in place. We're going to come right underneath of that, come right through. So one of the things we're going to have to deal with is all of this wiggle room. See how much wiggle room there is in the collar? This hook can really get out of whack and that's going to change the angle, that's going to change how far in your um, wire is into the head, it's going to change a lot about it. So that's why we need the painter's tape. So I'm going to get some painter's tape, find the spot where I like this the best. I like that tip to be right on the edge. Um, that, you, that should put the hook point uh, right in the middle of the, of the head. I may come down just a little bit, I don't know, we'll have to see. I haven't modified this obviously yet, so we'll figure it out as we go. But once I find that right spot, I'm going to put some uh, blue painter's tape down to hold the hook in place. Alright, I like that. Let's take a nice close look at it. You can see it's coming right below the center of the eye, so it won't come in and damage um, what holds the hook in place. I, I want to use this for swim jigs as well, so I don't want to completely ruin this hook eye area. I just want to make room for the wire below it. You can see I've done something similar there. I can still pour swim jig heads out of this, no problem at all. So that's the idea. And then on across, and underneath of here, it's not, um, it's not going to get in the way of the pins if I want to ever pour a one ounce swim jig head. The pin has plenty of room there to still sit in properly. All right, so from here, what we want to do, we want to close this guy very carefully because I don't want any of that to move. We're going to close it, um, make sure that nothing shifted, hence the tape, and then we're going to actually take this piece of wood onto the, my um, floor, onto my cement floor here. We're going to take the rubber mallet and we're going to strike the top, the other side, right? So this would be the bottom. We're going to flip this over and then we're going to pound it pound it pretty good and we're going to make an indention with this steel we're going to make an indention in this mold both here and here it's not going to go all the way down but it's going to show us enough to know where we want to take the file at that point fully realize once again that there's another way to do this right you could take a sharpie and i tried it once you could take a sharpie and color the uh, wire form if you wanted to and then as you close it, the idea is that some of that Sharpie comes off on both sides and then you can take the Dremel to it, you can take a file to it, whatever you want to do, and take care of it that way. When I tried it, the Sharpie ink didn't transfer nearly as well or really at all. So it didn't work for me. I found that this definitely works because as I pound it, I make that small indention and then I just actually, it even helps to put... Uh, to keep the file straight because it makes just a tiniest of indention and that's enough to keep the file right where I want it. All right, so let's close this guy up um, and make sure that nothing moves. This is ready to go. Um, the wood here is important because as you can see, I, I wouldn't want to put this on the floor like that because it's going to be at an angle, right? So the wood allows me to hang it off the edge so it's nice and flat right and I can strike the top of this without um, without it moving shifting because it's it's not flat so let's go to the floor and go ahead and give this a couple of wax so as you saw I had to give it a couple extra wax I checked it and the, the one side by the head looked good. I could see the indention. I didn't see the indention on the farther side closer to the handle. So I gave it a couple more wax on that handle side and I think we're looking good. So let's check it out. All right, here we go. Let's see, everything stayed in place. You can see actually the, uh, the tape there got pushed through. So that's a good thing. Let's make sure that this took. All 
it worked out really nice. So you can see we got a, a clear line right here. And obviously I got those extra wax really did the job on that guy. Clear line right there. So now we need to cut it fairly deep. I mean, deep enough for that. This is um, point four, by the way, wire form. So we need to cut it deep enough for that to sit down inside of there. Um, I won't bore you guys too much, but basically you'll see some of it, but I'm just gonna take this um, triangle file, right? And put it right in that groove. I can feel it sit right down in that groove and just move it back and forth right until I get a nice line all the way through likewise over here and then you can also see when I mention this you automatically get the same on the opposite side when you whack it like that so I'll do the same on this side as well and uh, be right back for you All right, filing's done. Not, um, not without its fair share of screw-ups. Even when you take it slow and you use that file, you can kind of get off a little bit. And I got in a hurry, and at least in one spot, got to digging in. I mean, just, just like this, it was off. But anyway, it's working. I got it clamped in. So let me show you where we sit. All right, so there she is. She's all filed down. You can see where I got off a bit on that one. And even more so over here. I was really in a hurry over there, unfortunately. But it does fold closed. It clamps up nice and tight. I already actually ran a, uh, a test with it. It turned out really nice. So all we've got to do now is make sure that we put our pin in. Otherwise, <laughs> it's going to come shooting out of there and, and not get a full pour. For that pin, you can use one of two things. You can use one of these guys right here, which is a Teflon pin, or you can find um, the metal pins. I think it's a, a rivet pin or something like that, but shorter. Um, if you can find those online, I actually, Art Fowler sent these to me. They work just right. Head's just a hair big, but you can squeeze it shut. Works really nice. The other thing you do is take the pins that the mold comes with and just cut them down to size. That works really well. And you can actually cut them at an angle so that it angles with the head if you really wanted to. But I'm going to use what Art gave me. Slip this in there um, and then let's pour some. The lead is hot. I already got the lead going. So let's pour one of these. All right, let me get the pin in. I got ahead of myself. We're going to pour it in a second. But I did want to explain this red stuff right here. So that red stuff is red RTV high temp gasket maker. I added it to this space around here so that the lead, you can see as the lead fills the head, it's going to come up inside of this hook uh, eye area. It's not a big deal. Cut it off. It's just part of the trimming if you want. But if you wanted to avoid that, you can put just a little bit of RTV in that hook slot and you don't get that. What we're gonna do, just for the sake of the video, I'm actually gonna pour this one at three quarter and then I'm gonna pour another one at half and I'll show you the difference in the um, before cleaned up product. So I almost forgot, it's all clamped up. You can see there, she's clamped up, ready to go. You need to take a close look at the hook. That hook, just because it doesn't sit flush, can get way over here, can get way over here. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a hook eye, or a hook point rather, that is not in line with the head or the wire, and you end up having to turn and twist the wire and reshape it and restructure it. So um, you need to make sure right before you pour that this hook point is right dead center, right? Can't be off. See up here, this is actually, it was actually a, a, a magnet, a, a magnet tape. I put it on the inside, trying to get it to fix it that way. It wouldn't close right, so I put it out there, not for the sake of the magnet, but just for the sake of the sticky stuff. So whatever you got, 
you can put that there and when I pour the half my hook point goes right against it so I know that I'm okay but for this one we're just going to make sure that it's right dead center so it pours properly all right I got my hook point right where I want it let's bring it in Go. let it cool and we'll open her up all right the big reveal here we go dun, 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 dun. there she is very cool so you can see what I'm talking about with the lead up here in the eye of the hook right we want to take care of that with a little RTV I'm going to pour one that is uh, half ounce so you can see the difference. But see what the pin did? Leaves just a little bit to be um, uh, shaved off. And otherwise, I mean, very little flashing. We got it low enough, got, got enough taken out uh, so it closes all the way and you don't get a bunch of flashing around the edges that you got to clean up as well. So let me pour that half ounce one and show you the difference. There you go. See the difference. Still got a little bit. I think I need to add some more RTV on this side just to fill it in. I've been using it a bunch and um, kind of wore away a little bit. But you can see there's a lot less. Um, there you go. You can see there's a lot less to have to take care of. Either way, not a big deal. Whether it's worth it or not, it's up to you. But a quick little tip if you want to minimize your cleanup afterwards. So speaking of cleanup afterwards, we've got a sprue to take care of here. Got a little bit of a nub. We got to get rid of that uh, hook eye area and get this thing cleaned up. So let's do that. I use these um, flush cut cutters and I'll go oh, about halfway in just, just enough that I can feel it get in there. I don't go all the way through. Once I'm all the way through, if I have a big hook, right, big jig, big hook, I don't do this with Midwest finesse because you'll you'll loosen the uh, the hook in the lead. But get it that far, and then just give it a little twist back and forth, and boom, super clean final result. I'm gonna put that back in the lead pot. Aside from that, we can clean up this hook eye. Kind of twist it a little bit here. Get that cleaned up, and we can clean up this guy as well. Same deal. I just push it in a little bit, and then twist, and get a nice flush edge. And then I can take a flat, small little finesse file, if you will, and just clean up the top, clean up around the nose and where the sprue was, right in the back. There we go. If you see any other minor imperfections, I have just a tad bit of flashing right there. Little hit with the file. Take that down. Now's the time to clean it all up. Of course, powder paint covers a multitude of sins. So get it close where you like it, and then we'll move on to painting. So there's a lot of different ways you can paint a jig. You can just dip it down into the Protec canister that it comes in and shake it around or just dip it down in there, shake it and bring it back up. Or you can use a fluid bed. This is my fluid bed right up here. See that guy right there he is. Four stall fluid bed um, that I use so I can do multiple colors. Um, and every one of my jigs gets a finished clear coat of UV blast. I just think it it adds the durability, the UV thing, yeah, if you think it works, it works, great. If it's a, a confidence booster at all, um, but more than anything, it gives it a really nice clean look, right? That clear coat. So that's what I do, but when you're talking spinner baits, it don't work, right? Those are two inch PVCs, wire form is in the way. Um, you're not gonna be able to dip those into a fluid bed like you normally would. So some different ways that I have seen, that I've even tried. So classic way, get the brush, put it on, tap, 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 move it around underneath, right? Try to take care of it that way. Another way would be um, just using your fingers. Just dip in to some of that powder or Protec and then kind of move your fingers around and, and try to spread it around as best as possible. Um, tried both of those, 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I was looking for something a little bit better. Um, one day I may try to engineer some sort of fluid bed that would work, but don't have that yet. Maybe for a future video, who knows. Um, what I did come across was a random video on YouTube of a guy using a salt shaker. So he heard that it, he heard of the idea on, uh, I don't know, social media somewhere else, a forum. So he tried it. He had the normal small square um, salt shaker with the screw on metal top. As he did it though, way too much came out. So I thought, that's a good idea. It just needs to be tweaked. So what I did, I went to the dollar store and I picked up these guys right here, right? And these happen to have a solid lid on it. Um, actually, the first one that I picked up was this guy with a bunch of different lids. And you can see I taped off the holes that I didn't want to use so it didn't over saturate the jig. But then I found the solid lids and then just drilled some holes in it. So for the powder paints that um, are thinner, right, they don't have a lot of pearl in it, they don't have heavy um, glitter or things like that, you can drill really small holes. I think it's like a 1 16th size hole, uh, as many as you want for as fast as you want the powder paint to come out. For bigger, uh, thicker paints, right, Silver Mine is a really thick paint. White Pearl, really thick paint. Then just use a slightly uh, larger drill bit to allow more of that to come out easily. So that's what we're going to use today. I'm going to, uh, even though this says chartreuse, it's actually watermelon with red flake. So we're going to use this to paint our spinner bait, uh, and then we are going to finish it with UV blast because I just like the look. So other tools that we're going to need, I like forceps just because, like you see, you lock it in place um, and you don't have to keep constant pressure on it to keep it where you want it. So I like those a lot. Locking forceps, they're also, um, these are trout pliers or whatever. So like those, heat gun, gonna need a heat gun to heat up. I really try to just heat up the head as much as possible, keep away from there so we don't get any extra paint. You'll always end up with a little bit on the, um, on the front, but keep it away from the rest. So let's see what we can do to paint this guy up. So step one, let's heat it up. Got a piece of paper down, obviously, to catch the overage. Let's see what that looks like. It's not bad. Whoop, forgot the nose. Give it just a little bit more heat. I'm gonna go ahead and second coat this guy as long as we've got it, got him out. Sorry if I'm not doing so hot on the camera angle. This is a little awkward. All right, and now the UV blast, whoopsie. Do it over here. Don't want to mix the two, obviously. Don't need a lot, a lot on that one. Just, whoops, just enough. Come on. There we go. Not too shabby. I think it turned out all right. There we go. Turned out pretty good. Uh, the UV blast there got a little heavy on one eye, but overall, I think that turned out pretty darn nice. And I think the uh, the shakers, I could control it pretty well. I think those worked out pretty well too. So uh, we need to get this guy cured. So I'm going to use, um, if you recall, a couple videos back. We made these guys, right? Well, the whole purpose of me originally making these guys was because my um, my oven doesn't fit if I hang them. Made these guys so that I can put them down inside. Um, there we go. And they'll stand up in my oven just like that. I put this guy in my oven. 
mine, I would encourage you to check out the Wednesday in the Workshop um, playlist because I did a whole video on dialing in the temperature on your oven. Mine runs hot, as does pretty much every, um, every toaster oven like this. So I put mine on 300 knowing that it actually runs around 350 if I set it to 300. Then I let these go for a little over 25 minutes comes out beautiful fully cured and the only thing left to do after that let it cool we'll put the red I'm gonna put some red eyes on this guy so we'll put the red eyes on and then seal it and we'll be ready for part two all right ovens warmed up set to 300 rack is at the lowest level and in, in she goes right into the middle Set it for about 27 minutes. Just a little bit of extra time since I opened the, the uh, door. And we'll be ready to finish this bad boy. All right, she's out of the oven, cured up, ready to go. Looks great. Turned out wonderful. So the only thing left to do is to put some eyes on this thing and seal it up. So I'm gonna be using um, 3 16th size number three red eyes from lure parts online 3d eyes for that a um, little bit of super glue uh, gel right in the eye socket and i like these longer um, tweezers i used to use the little stubby ones that you just get at the whatever walmart or something like that and i was having trouble with them but these long ones they had that little curved edge to them too i don't know something about them just bigger fits better in my hand Works a lot better, super cheap on Amazon, two pack. So uh, let's see if we can get the eyes on this thing. All right, so let's get the eyes on this guy. A um, couple recessed eye sockets, you can see. So the 3 16th fits down inside of there. You could probably go to a quarter inch, but they will um, take up that whole space and may not seat all the way to the inside. So I like to go just one size smaller. The eyes, I actually pull out and put on my hand. Um, reason being, I found that as I would pick them off, the sticky edge would just kind of stick to my um, tweezers. But if I put them on my hand first, I can get some of that stickiness off on my hand. And then it makes it a lot easier to pick them up, place them. So, a little trick there. Try it out if you like. So, very, very, very little glue i mean very little glue i basically let it pop out i let it suck back in and then just touch you can see i mean you can barely see the glue on there right less is more because if you get too much on there um then it clouds up the eyes it makes it look really nasty there's one. A little challenging to do this with a camera in front of me. There we go. Suck it back in. Lightly touch. And drop it. There we go. Boom. She's all set. Love those red eyes because it picks up the red flake in this watermelon red powder coat. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. I'm actually going to put it um, in front of a fan to make sure that as that glue dries and cures, it's going to let off a vapor, and I don't want that vapor to sit back down on the jig head and make it cloudy. So I'm going to put it in front of a fan with a little um, half fun noodle that I uh, that I cut up that holds these guys up and then let it go for I don't know five ten minutes then we're gonna take our Sally Hansen's and hard as nails and we're gonna coat the whole thing at least once sometimes I do two but usually one coat with that super glue is more than enough to take care of everything All right, we are ready, finally, 
for the final seal. So a bit of a longer video today because we went all the way back. Couldn't even pour this lead until we modified the mold. So hopefully you have hung with me so far. I promise these uh, part one of two videos in the future won't be quite so long. But trying to accomplish a lot in today's video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Picked up some stuff along the way. Let's seal this guy with some Sally Hansons. And we will wrap this video up. She's all set. Sealed up. Looking good to go. Can't wait to get this guy on the vise. So stick with me. The rest of this week, part two is coming up where we're gonna put this guy in the vise and tie up a sprayed grass pattern. Um, and then we're gonna shoot a very special soft plastic. So looking forward to that. If you, in the meantime, right? Between now and then, if you wanna check out some more videos on lure making, you wanna check out this video right here. If you're interested in knowing why I call the channel what I call it, I'm going to click on this video right here. Otherwise, until part two, I'll see you guys.